Welcome, and thank you for joining today's webinar on how Kenametal improved efficiency with auto classification using SAP GTS. During this presentation, we will discuss how Kenametal replaced their legacy system with SAP GTS, utilizing the new functionality of integration with customs brokers, and how it affected their business. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Today's speakers are Chris Birch from Kenametal and James Van Riper and Louise Gomez from Crypt. Chris is the Senior <clears throat> Business Analyst in Trade Compliance at Kenametal. He specializes in the system portion of the business and was the lead project manager for the GTS implementation done with Crypt. He is currently managing a preference project at Kenametal. Jim is one of the first two consultants to ever work with GTS and is part of the SAP Platinum Consulting Practice. He is a collaborative solutions consultant who specializes in GTS implementation, compliance, SPL screening, classification, and self-filing, among other focus areas. Luis is a highly skilled GTS ABAP consultant with nearly a decade of experience in application development, implementation, configuration, and maintenance. Some of his areas of focus include customs management, compliance, product classification, and development. Next slide, please. If questions come up during the webinar, please type them into the panel as shown in the example. We'll be addressing them at the end of the presentation. If we run out of time and don't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards. On the next slide, I'd like to quickly introduce Crypt for those of you who are less familiar with us. Crypt was established in 2008 and is a leading SAP consulting partner. Although we operate globally, we consider ourselves a boutique consulting firm that lives by our founding principles of innovation, collaboration, and drive. These principles have allowed us to complete many supply chain and global trade projects in various industries all over the world. Our services focus around implementations, upgrades, and customizations for various SAP solutions, including trade, transportation, warehouse, planning, and IBP. We also offer proprietary solutions, integration services, and work closely with SAP for ramp ups and testing. On the next slide, I'd like to share some of our thought leadership. We strive to be thought leaders in the supply chain ecosystem, and we've accomplished this by authoring books in addition to writing blogs and white papers, which are available on our website. Moving on to the next slide. This is an overview of our proprietary offerings, which complements the SAP suite. I wanted to briefly highlight Crypt Connect, located in the middle of the solution list. This particular solution can be integrated with non-SAP ERP systems, which many people find valuable. Moving on to the next slide. Over the years, we've had the opportunity to work with a variety of companies within the SAP supply chain space, and some of them are highlighted here. And with that, I'll pass it over to Jim. So the agenda today is uh, to cover the business problem that we're faced at Canametal. We'll look at the automated classification solution uh, in a couple different steps. We'll look at the business process overview and, and uh, what the requirements were. Then we'll look at the business rules that we established. Uh, we'll look at the key data elements that were required to do auto classification, and then we will walk through the solution. Finally, we'll have some technical insights, uh, look at the technical process flow, and then look at machine learning as a future release of auto classification. Next slide. All right, uh, thanks, Jim. I'm gonna take over here. Uh, so this is Chris Burch from Kenna Metal. Uh, just to give everybody a little bit of background about Kenna Metal, we were founded in 1938 by Philip McKenna in the town of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Uh, at our core, we're a company of tooling and industrial materials, and we're spread across a, a wide array of industry segments. Back in 1938, the company started in downtown Latrobe. It was just one little machine shop with a handful of people, uh, and today we have over 10,000 employees and our annual revenue is around $2.4 billion a year. So a lot's changed in the past 80 years for Penta Metal. Uh, talking about some main uh, pain points we're experiencing and why we got involved with Crip, uh, we have a large uh, number of materials. So with a portfolio that reaches into the, the millions um, and a limited number of resources to, to handle those materials, we needed a better solution to classify products in a more timely manner and really a more compliant manner. Um, repetitive classifications, like I said, we, we have 
millions of materials, but really our, our materials fall within 15 to 20 tariff classifications. So we'd be reclassifying um, lots of materials with the same classifications daily. It would just be repetitive work. So we felt we could, we could automate that. Um, delays due to unclassified products, manual process of classification. You know, with only so many resources in our compliance team and so many hours in a work day, um, there'd be times that missing classifications in the system would, would cause shipping delays and, you know, hold up, hold up shipments being released. So we needed a, a solution to fix that. Um, and also we were doing classifications at the time of shipping. So really we try to be as proactive as possible and classify materials before they're at the scale to be shipped. Um, but, you know, again, with our, with our volume of materials and how many people we have in our group, it was kind of unavoidable that there's times we'd be, we'd be classifying at shipping. Um, and, and this solution helped us fix that. Uh, and the last main pain point, like I said, we, we have a very small team globally and a large, you know, large portfolio of materials. So it, it led us down this road to find some automation. Um, our objective when we worked with CRIP was to, to automate classification um, where business rules were 100% consistent. Obviously, our goal was to focus on being as compliant as possible. Um, but that taken into account, we, we came up with this this rule set where we could we could pick rules that we knew were 100% um, compliant. Next slide, please. This is Jim. So the the first issue was that we were looking at out of classification, um, and we needed to classify products for the commodity, the tariff, and the export control list. We figured that those were the items that we could write rules for and uh, create a program that would automatically classify them in the product master and GTS. Uh, we decided to do a rule set based uh, process and uh, so we needed, a, uh, needed to look at um, what were the uh, objects we could do and, and then identify rules that we could actually uh, define based on the uh, information that was available. So. What we wanted to do was to automate the new product classification. So when the material came into GTS, uh, we wanted to set up a change pointer and then process a change pointer for the classification uh, based on the rule sets. And, and you know, if there was no rule set, then it would not be classified. But if there was a rule set, we would classify it at the time of the product creation um, and not let the uh, process run all the way to delivery and then scramble to do classification. So we also can manually run the classification set to reclassify the existing products. And that was another uh, one of the objections we had was to make sure that not only the new products, but the old products were 100% were consistent with the rule set. And, we, and I think there was a few changes that, we, that came out of that as well. Um, finally, we wanted to make sure that there was a reduction in the classification workload for the compliance team. And because we were able to uh, identify rules and uh, process a, a percentage of the of the uh, uh, total product masters are coming through, which is quite a large number. Um, that meant that the the product team only had to look at the exceptions ex as opposed to the ones that were repetitive classified over and over again. So next slide. So this is the process overview that we were looking at. First, we would establish a business rule. So we had to look at at the uh, materials that were in there and see what the, you know, what Chris and his team were doing to uh, classify the products. We had identified that there really were uh, only a certain uh, set of key data that we needed to look at to do a lot of the classification. So we collected up the key data elements in ECC um, and those were sent to GTS as additional data elements for the product master. Um, once they're in the product master, we could maintain a rule set, which was in a custom table as well. It's not available in GTS out of the box. Then we would uh, create a uh, program that we could run in batch, and it would look at the uh, change pointer for the material and then run it against the rule set, analyze results, and classify the product. Next step. Okay, so the business rules. Um, Again, we had to observe the process and, and identify what the uh, steps were to do classification. And then we identified 
uh, data elements that could be used to classify the products 100% of the time. And some of the examples were that all the FERTs for certain company codes were EAR99. Um, and so that, you know, right there took, uh, took the ECCN classification off quite a lot of the materials. And then uh, an example that we might have had were all materials for a certain product hierarchy, in this case we're using a fork truck, um, you know, it's a generic solution, are all tariff, um, you know, 84, 27, 24,000. And um, um, so that's, uh, you know, an IDAS uh, solution example that we're going to probably um, look at in a minute. And then finally, uh, we expect to classify less than 100% of the materials. So that's just an expectation you have up front that you will not classify all the materials. But uh, if you can classify a certain percentage of the materials um, 100% of the time, then correctly, then um, that will save work overall. Next slide. So in this case, we looked at the key data elements. We identified that um, the company code of the material, that drives a lot of, of uh, decisions. Uh, the product hierarchy of the material, and in this case, what we talked about before, based on the company code and the product hierarchy, you can, you can decide that you know no materials in certain company codes are anything but ER99. So that was uh, one of the rule sets that we were able to put together. The other thing was to look at the material type and um, all their all the FERT materials uh, were also ER99. Looking at the product hierarchy, uh, you could also drive to the uh, tariff number and um, in a certain percentage of the materials as well. And uh, yeah, so uh, next slide, please. Hey, Lisa, 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 we have to know. Uh, I'm going to be walking through some of the screens. Um, so this is our, our crypt uh, demo system. This isn't the, the kind of metal system. And uh, I'm using the SAP web GUI here. So uh, st starting off this demo, I I'm going to be uh, walking through uh, an example of uh, a material being created in ECC. Those uh, product uh, attributes being transferred over to GTS. I'm going to run the our program manually and then uh, get an automated classification based on a rule set. So starting off here, um, I'm creating a, a material uh, ECC. Um, I'm going to copy it from another one. This is this example is going to be a, a forklift truck. So here I'm going to focus on this uh, product hierarchy we can see is 00105. We can map a, a number of uh, a product uh, master data attributes. Um, in this case, I'll just be highlighting the, the product hierarchy, but anything that's available uh, for that material can be mapped uh, to GTS and then be used uh, in, in our rules. So we get that material created. It's a 2513 in this case. Then we're going to send it over to GTS. So, so normally you, you wouldn't be seeing this process. Uh, it, it would probably be in the, in the batch, uh, in the background process. But uh, we're, we're going to send this material 2513 over to GTS. Um, so so what's, what's happening at this point is a change pointer is being created in GTS. Uh, that lets us know there's a, a brand new material that needs classification. And also all the, the product attributes uh, were picked up from, from the various master data tables and ECC and uh, sent over um, uh, with that product to GTS. So if we open, up, open it up in the product master in GTS, we go to the additional characteristics tab, we can, we can see some of those uh, product attributes we've mapped uh, in this case. Um, we can see that that product hierarchy came over 0105. We also have uh, this material type as a, as a FERT. So now we can uh, go to our rules table and uh, verify that we have a rule for, for this situation. So, so in this case, this is an, an SM30 for, for the rules table. Um, at, in Kenna Metal, we uh, also developed um, a spreadsheet upload utility. So this could be maintained as a like as a team spreadsheet and then be uploaded into into the system um, without having uh, to, to go into this table. Um, so here we're specifying. Uh, that for 00105 hierarchies and material type verts, we're going to classify according to ACE USHTS uh, numbering scheme. We're going to classify that 84272040000. Um, so now I'm going to go over to my um, automated classification program, and I'm going to run this one manually. Um, this this would normally be set up 
to run a, as a batch process in the background as well. So as new materials are coming into your GTS system, um, they're being uh, re recorded as change pointers, and then this program would be running periodically to, to automatically classify those products. So, so this doesn't need to be run uh, manually, but you can definitely do so if you need a, to, for example, reclassify a, a certain amount of products, or you need to run it just for, for for some specific cases. Maybe you added some some brand new rules and you want to go back to some some products that that uh, you previously missed. Um, here uh, we can also add um, uh, a, a number of uh, uh, filters depending on what what uh, product attributes uh, you might want to use or might want to be able to filter by. Uh, th this is just the, the user interface, the selection screen to uh, to our solution. So this can be uh, customized as well. So, so I'm going to run this just for uh, product 2513. Uh, it's going to let me know just that, that I'm only running it for one. Um, and I'm going to confirm that, and it's going to it's going to go through its processes, picking it up. Um, it's a uh, all its additional attributes, comparing them to the rules table, um, and then uh, arriving at an output. So, so we can go and check that in the product master in GTS. If we go to the classification uh, tab. We can see that we got a, a US HTS classification. We determined it as 84272004000, um, which is what we had in our rules. Um, we also had a rule uh, to classify this as EAR99 because uh, it's a it's a FERT material, so that's uh, regardless uh, of, the, of the hierarchy. It's just uh, in, in this situation where we're getting all the FERT materials as EAR99s. Um, so, so here we would uh, also be able to to, to be able to uh, refer to the audit trail and, and see who ran the the program. Um, whether it was ran uh, automatically or manually. Uh, so, so these classifications, as, as they get recorded in GTS, they'll be recorded into, into the, the standard audit tables. Um, so, so now I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about some of the, the technical insights. Um, so, so our design philosophy for this was to use as much, uh, as, much as the standard tools that uh, SAP gives us as part of a, the ABOP workbench and um, and various APIs within GTS, um, and just kind of fill in the gaps with uh, with automation. So so uh, mimicking some of the processes that that would uh, normally happen manually, uh, we just tie those pieces in GTS together um, with our custom solution, um, and this lets us maintain a lot of the a lot of the the system integrity of GTS, such as uh, yeah having having a full uh, a fully auditable uh, trail, being able to uh, to to to, re to log errors, be able to recover them. Uh, so so th so routine task for your uh, for your IT team. So they'll be able to uh, to maintain this as they would any other um, SAP application if anything were to go wrong. Um, I'll talk about a little bit about the, the rules evaluation. So as we've mentioned before, you want to have in there rules that are 100% match. Uh, so stuff you stuff you know for sure. Um, and we uh, we added some functionality to be able to add wildcards into that. So for example, we had a let, let's say we have a product hierarchy where we know the the first three digits determine the the HTS code. So we, we could have uh, in our rule set. The, those first three digits in an asterisk indicating a wild card, and it'll grab everything after that um, w w with those first three digits of that hierarchy, and um, and apply that rule set to it. So so because we have this, and that gives us the potential to for for us to get several rule hits, uh, we, we uh, applied a uh, applied some weighting so, so that the 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 rule that's going to get picked is the one that has uh, the highest uh, uh, character match. So you could have different levels if you wanted to to break it down in, into the various subchapters uh, according to hierarchies. You, you would be able to do that. Um, and then finally, we uh, we uh, make this to be a a multi-threaded uh, solution. So depending on your system resources, depending on your your um, your master data volume, uh, we, we can uh, we can tune this program to use the the amount of resources we want. It, uh, from your application server to to be able to uh, perform this these tasks efficiently. Um, 
so next I'm going to walk through uh, a bit of a, of a technical process of uh, uh, of this solution. So, so starting off, we get our, our new product in, in ECC. Um, all those uh, all those product attributes that we had mapped, um, we, we add those to to that to the product interface. We add our configuration. Those all come over now every time uh, a new material gets sent to GTS, and then we get that change pointer, so we know we got the, a new material to look at. So now that we want to 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 run this program, we'll be able to grab that change pointer and grab our attributes from the various tables and pull that into our program. Uh, as product data, we uh, then evaluate that uh, against the, the rules in our table, um, which we've uh, mentioned before have to be a 100% match. If we get some matches in the rules, um, we select that, that closest match, and then we make a classification decision uh, automatically. We then pass that over to the, the classification API, and that, that product gets classified in GTS. So uh, this assumes that, that we have a rule and we found a match. If we look at, at the bottom right decision point, so, so what happens if we don't have rules or matches? Um, and that, that's uh, what we're looking at uh, at solving a uh, next. Um, and we're actually we've actually uh, built a a prototype that's been uh, moderately successful in, in classifying uh, uh, products using uh, machine learning. So, so what we've done, we used uh, uh, various machine learning techniques to take uh, take uh, product attributes. Um, we, uh, we then run them through, uh, through these machine learning algorithms. Um, it, it applies, uh, let's say we have a material description as, as one of our inputs. It'll take uh, keywords off that description, uh, creating uh, what's called tokens, and then uh, it'll be able to apply math on that um, to be able to to compute a, a, a statistical figure um, that that'll let um, your data coming in that you want to classify uh, be able to be compared against uh, existing data points, and then uh, we uh, we arrive at a at a prediction for, for a classification and also get a a confidence uh, level uh, of that prediction um, so depending on what that confidence level is let's see the system is 95 percent confident that's a good match then we would be able to take in that that classification and use it or if it's less than 95 then we could um, send it in for for review for further information and all that information that gets collected goes back in and uh, will help uh, make uh, future decisions. So, so this is uh, something that would get better as it goes. Um, we have uh, uh, our planned release uh, it's for quarter four later this year. Um, so, so right now we, we are in a, in a prototype phase and uh, we're hoping to begin uh, some pilot phases soon. Um, we have uh, some further information available and we're gonna be doing more webinar series uh, in this topic. If you'd like to learn more, uh, we, we can get you a, a hold of our white paper on this. And uh, if you'd like to see this it, uh, live also, we'd be happy to, to schedule the demo as well. Um, so, so that concludes uh, this portion of the presentation. I'm gonna pass it back over to Rachel for Q&A. Thanks, Elise. Um, it looks like we have a couple minutes here to answer some questions that have come in. So the first question is, what percentage of products do you typically see classified automatically? Uh, I'll, this is Chris from Kelman. I'll take that one. So I think when we started this process with Jim and Luis, we were shooting for 40 to 50 percent of our products. Um, we felt that was a pretty obtainable number, but you know, not having done this before, we weren't really sure. Um, I think we hit that from the get-go. I think we were around 60 percent once we built the initial set of rules in. And now that you know Jim and Luis have moved on to other projects they left us with the, the tool to basically add our own rules in as we go. So now that we've had time to, to sit and look at our, you know, not core product line, but our, our more one-off products, I think we're up around 70, 75% at this point, auto classification. So like Jim said earlier, that leaves us a lot more time as a compliance group to review the, the not standard items. So hope that answers your question. 
what kind of information can be used to make rules? Uh, this gem, I'll talk about that. Um, basically anything that you can you can pull out of your ECC system. So it, primarily you immediately think of things that are in your material master, but you can, you, if you, uh, you could also potentially pull data out of your info records if you needed to as well. But primarily the info, uh, uh, the material master is where we're pulling data out of. So you're looking at the um, uh, material type, you're looking at the product hierarchy, uh, the company code that created the material we were sending over, uh, there's some custom fields that we were sending over for Canada Metal that were, you know, specific to their business um, that also drove a few of the decisions. Um, but by and large, um, anything that's that's connected to your material master uh, directly or indirectly can be used to make a decision of, uh, on the classification. How long does this take to set up? Well, <laughs> Go ahead, Liz. Yeah. So, um, so the, the assumption there is that you have a, an SAP GTS system uh, already in place. Um, if, if we were to come in there and and, uh, and build this, uh, the solution uh, in, into your system, we can we just made maybe about four to six weeks um, to, to get that get those get the analytics done. Uh, just decide what what the what product attributes would, would work best. Get that those mapped over to GTS. And uh, apply apply the solution, and then uh, run run various test cases through it until until you're happy with it. But I, I'd estimate that about four to six week process, assuming a, a GTS system's in place. And does uh, Descartes provide the rules? That's Jim. No, they they don't provide the rules uh, at least currently. Um, they're they, uh, you know, there's always a possibility in the future that they could provide rules, but I think that this is a more of a, a business decision, um, in which case you need to look at your own business attributes. So uh, I, I, I would say that that's not going to happen anytime soon, um, at least. And the next question is uh, directed at Chris specifically. Um, have you seen ROI with this implementation? I've seen ROI. Um, I would say it's probably still a little too early to look at those kind of metrics. Um, we we kind of just, we're, we're under a year still of, of being live with this thing. I will say, as far as the classification work our group's been doing, it, it's, it's definitely more compliant. You know, if anybody here does classification work on their own, you know that, that my idea of a classification for a product might be different from your idea of a classification. So us working as a team here at Kenna Metal, coming up with these rules as a team, um, you know, means that, that we have less me classifying a product a certain way and a, a colleague classifying it a different way. So it's definitely made our, our data more compliant. Um, but as far as ROI, I think it's a, it's a little, little too soon to tell. I would say, you know, we'd be able to tell that within a year or two. Okay, uh, thank you, Chris. Jim and Luis. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Um, so if we didn't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you after the webinar. We'll also be sending out the slides to everyone in the next couple of days, so keep an eye out for those. Thanks everyone for joining and we will see you next time.